Hui hui! It's Louis T again, and for this video, I'm gonna be doing a reading vlog of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Hooray! So, ever since I started watching BookTube in 2018, I've been seeing this book, and of course, as usual, I have been curious about reading it, and it's been like a book that I want to read. And in 2019, I included this in one of my book surveys, and this happens to be a winner. And it's just now that I'm reading it. <laughs> so, I actually bought Crooked Kingdom already, and because, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I already had the series and make sure that they're all matchy matchy, because that's the way Louis D is. So, after about a couple of years, I am now reading Six of Crows. So, j -j -j -j, let's begin! So I just finished reading the first three chapters of Six of Crows and honestly I'm having a painful reading experience. Like to me like the narratives, the way they're synthesized they don't really make sense and here I go again with the whole like this is the narrative and then this is me and then there's some sort of like a wall that's like you know blocking it. Like to me, okay, so what I'm getting so far is like there's Juice and they kind of try doing this thing and with Anya who they thought was a healer but like a hard something, you know? And then like the next narrative, it's like it was a chapter for Inej but then you don't really get to see Inej's voice. More like she was just like, okay, I'm on top of the rooftop and then I'm looking at the scene down at Kaz and like... All these like conversations that they were doing just didn't make sense. Like I couldn't connect with the narrative. And there was just this like one little scene of that chapter that was like, okay, all right, that was something that I kind of felt that, that was kind of cool. But overall it was just like, uh, what the hell is going on here? And that's the thing, like there were some situations where you're not sure about what's exactly happening. Like is Inej like somewhere else or is she still on the rooftop? And like with Kaz, you know, with the whole that it was he chained or not because he can kind of like move. There's something wrong with the way that, you know, the narratives were synthesized that to me it's like, it's just bringing me a painful reading experience. I hope it does get better. And I just saw like the second book in the King of Scars or the Nikolai uh, series of Lee Bardugo. And the cover is like light brown and y'all know how I feel about the color brown. It's my favorite color. But you know how I feel about this book so far. It doesn't been really that great. So yeah. Okay, let me elaborate about the I can't see. Inej's voice in that chapter. Now to clarify, the second chapter's title is Inej. So I was expecting it to be seen in the perspective of Inej and her being in the narrative of that chapter specifically. But most of it had to deal with Kaz and to me, like as a reader, I just don't think that that was supposed to be Inej's perspective because you can only just see like, oh, Inej and like, here's my... TV screen, which, like I said, it's kind of a mess. Like, you don't know in what position she is on the rooftop or, you know, uh, it, it, it just discombobulated me. 
trigger warnings for animal cruelty. Now, the scene where they captured Matthias is the one that went through the narrative, where the story started to become clear, and where I felt like I was slowly being immersed in the narrative. Um, but overall, still, I do have concerns about how the narrative is synthesized. It's like, I don't really think that I'm getting where the narrative was able to give me an experience where I understand the um, background of why these people are being captured. It's as if like you're just being thrown into like where they are and then suddenly here we get to capture them. For some reason now I get to see the pictures or the images clearly. Um, but still, it's like every now and then, here's another thing that I'm you know, that, that I've noticed ever since I started reading this book, is that, like, there's a lot of people being thrown in, in each scenes, and, and like, lately, with, like, Inej suddenly appeared, and um, Muzin suddenly appeared, like, the way these people appeared, the transition wasn't, like, vivid, you know? There's something, like, there's some sort of, like, gaps between the narratives, the sequences that, it's, like, Okay, okay, I'm here already. Okay, so this is what's happening. How did this happen? I don't know. Mm, but I would say that compared to yesterday, I had a little bit of a better experience, and I'm hoping that the momentum sustains throughout um, when I read the pages. I still have quite a long way to go. I just reached the second part of the book. And... Yeah, right now the pictures are or like the scenes are vividly, you know, expressed and you know, it's synthesized in a better manner, but still not, you know, there are still times when it's just not captivating enough. Um sometimes it doesn't make sense. Although these uh recent pages that I'm reading now that I'm in the scene with between Mina and Matthias, uh, it's a bit a little bit more captivating than how the earlier chapters were um, and I hope it does get better but the fact that I had that experience at the beginning uh, it's not really it's not really good and I'm still also another thing is that I'm still wondering how all these things have like you know kind of like a contribution to the overall you know narrative of the heist you know um, actually, I did kind of rant to like my Phil Borg's group and said, like, I've read the second chapter, and so far I'm wondering why is it captivating? And somebody said, it's a character-driven book, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. And to me, it's like what I care about with books that if it's character-driven, the situations or the circumstances they're in, and how to me they help in building up the narrative but if it's just like telling you a story of like what this character has been through and like the situation doesn't seem to you know contribute or pile up to the uh, the overall narrative of the story then i'm like what am i reading like an anthology <laughs> hopefully this book gets better but in terms of how it progresses, it's quite slow. I mean, in terms of how it becomes more captivating. Okay, another reading update. And I'm already in like page 161. And again, it's boring. The only thing that I got is that Whelan was hired, or rather became a part of the group, but it seems like he is not the most skilled for the heist. That's all that I got, and the rest you know, the whole thing about the Pika or Pekka Rollins revelation. My gosh, you get tongue tied. Yeah, just the story so far isn't captivating. So far, what I got is that Kaz has a brother named Jordy, and they were just kind of like talking about, you know, his life with his brother Jordy. And there was a scene wherein they were doing some strategies and how they're going to figure out and getting into the temple or I think the ice court, you know, I could care less because the narrative itself is not captivating. You know, I'm honestly like lost and, you know, so far this narrative isn't just hooking me in. All I'm just getting is like Nina was, oh, no, not Nina, Inej was injured and Nina was kind of like taking care of her and they were having all these like conversations and all talking, 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 talking. 
and you now I'm just like this isn't exactly what I signed up for I it's I wasn't really going on for like you know a day in the life of whatsoever because to me it's like it's not really I don't I don't think that these like things are contributing to the narrative other than they were trying to fit it. I know I'm, I'm just like honestly having a painful experience reading Six of Crows. I'm honestly like wanting to stand uh, like some K-pop idols lately. Like honestly, I put down the book and then I would end up like standing um, SF9. You know, I really love their uh, song, uh, My Story, My Song. I've been like putting that on loop in YouTube. <laughs> and also, you know, been kind of going back to 17, you know, I've been, you know, standing again. And uh, y'all know if you saw some of my previous videos, you saw that I am a carrot. I actually filmed a video about recommending books to 17 members. And yes, the carrot in me is coming out again. And I'm just gonna get a coffee button and I'll just catch you folks soon. So here's my coffee bun. So now I notice that they already are beginning with a heist. They're already in the ice court. And then they flash back to Kaz's story uh, with Chordy when Kaz fainted. Okay, so they mentioned something here about, like, if you're going to be smart, it will make you cuter. Well, I agree, you know, like, when you are trying to make yourself smarter, it makes you cuter and better. And so far from what I've noticed, like, Nina's homesickness is the only thing that kind of, like, made the narrative, like, a lot better, or rather, kind of contributed to the narrative. But is it enough for this book to pass? We'll find out towards the end. So yesterday I read the part where they had a flashback of Inej and how, you know, she was kind of like captured, if that's the right term, and how, you know, the reason behind her joining the heist, which can help her pay off debt. I think that is a very, you know, essential uh, contribution to the overall narrative. You know, that was really vividly done, so kudos to that. Um, I just think, though, that this should have been done during the beginning. It's not like suddenly this flashback just came. And I'm already in the part, well, not too far from that. I'm reading right now Kaz's flashback. And to me right now, it just like suddenly popped out that in terms of like how cohesive the narrative of the edge to Kaz's like narrative, their voices from this part, I was like, eh? Just wasn't smooth, so. So I think Inej and Nina had a hard time sneaking in the prison. Okay, so just a little reading update. I only got or was like fascinated or captivated by the conversations of Jasper and Willen or Wylan. And I just think that Mithia's like betrayed Nina. So that's all I got. Okay, so now they got Helene's diamond. And because I'm already in the last part, it's time for me to pick Monet's read from the Faith Jar. Hooray! So let me just shake it off a bit. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. <laughs> and then I'm going to look into the camera. We'll see which one do I pick. I think I'm going to go with this one. Oh, oops. Let's see what book is this. Okay, so I'm going to be reading. I don't know if you're seeing it right here. There you go. Perfect by Ellen Hopkins. Okay, so I'm already in the scene where Nita drank the parent. And she is dealing with the consequences of drinking it. So I just finished reading Six of Crows and I think I'm going through sleep through the night. 
to sink in all the thoughts, and I'll tell you folks my feedback in the next clip. Okay, so as mentioned, I already read Six of Crows, and overall, my reading experience was... There's just something about the narrative that the way that it was synthesized, it just has some sort of a wall. It's like, this is the narrative, and like, this is I, and there's a wall. For some reason, for the most part, there's like a barrier. And that's just like my experience. And um, there were times wherein the voices of the characters, or rather, you know, because the thing is, when I read books where the chapters have like the name of the uh, characters, I'm most likely expecting that it's going to be coming from their perspective or their voice. And in some parts, especially like with Inages, there were times when I'm thinking it was Kaz's voice because it was kind of like Kaz all over it and it wasn't like hers, which was not exactly what I liked. And all throughout, I was just like, when I was like reading it, I was just like, eh, okay, even with the highest already, those scenes, like, what I got, like, what was vivid about it was just, like, releasing the prisoners. Okay, there was, like, some costume change, but it's kind of like there were times wherein, like I said, the way it was synthesized, the flow seems like there were, like, gaps or some disconnections with it. And there were times wherein, like, okay, uh, we get to see suddenly a flashback of Kaz, wherein I felt like it could have been put uh, earlier. I felt like the transition to the flashbacks weren't smooth. And like some of the only good things that I liked it, it's just like from what I, to me, the only parts were in, okay, uh, the barrier kind of like shattered uh, was like when, like especially towards the end was like with um, Van X revelation of Willen's capabilities. And like overall, and then, like, it's like, yeah, mm, yeah, it wasn't really a great reading experience. It wasn't even good, like a good reading experience, I should say. Um, it was painful. It was dreadful. And it did put me in some sort of a reading funk. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, and this is something that, like, I have thought because I actually saw, like, a video by Reads with Kassara about, uh, you know, if you want to get into adult fantasy, like where to start. Um, she did say about Six of Crows, uh, although it's why it could be like a great transition if you would like to get into like adult or new adult, because it does have some sort of new adult elements. And then, um, but not exactly like I think as intense, if that's what she said. Um, Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, um, I don't know if, if that's what it is, but well, it's just something that I just kind of like contemplated. But hopefully when I get to read other adult fantasy books, I would have like better reading experiences than this. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, I think overall I'm giving this book... 1.5 out of 5 stars. To me, it's still a little bit better than Twilight because that was just like, uh, um, I can't really recall anything great about that. It's kind of like my, you know, all time not so favorite book. <laughs> so yeah, I'm giving this 1.5 out of 5 stars. And honestly, that's already a sign for me to DNF the series. But because I already have Crooked Kingdom, and honestly, I'm, well, to be fair, towards the end, there was a little bit of an intrigue because of what happened, but I felt like it wasn't enough to pull it just because overall I had, like, a painful reading experience. So, yeah, Crooked Kingdom needs to be very good in order for it to stay in my shelf. Feel free to comment down below your comments and thoughts. I know some folks loved it. And if you reach this part of the video, feel free to comment with any book emoji, open, close, orange, blue, green, or even a stack of books. So, yep, I guess that's about it. If you folks like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. 
Also, click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon somewhere down there to keep yourselves posted about my videos. And I'll also be putting down the links and handles of my social media accounts, so feel free to check me out and follow me there as well. As always, thank you super much for watching. Let us continue seeking for wisdom and unleash the reader in you. Bye, y'all.